Today's lesson is on tracking individual campaigns using ETMs. Marketers deal with a lot of social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, and of course, Google and Google Ads. And although you know that leads are coming in, you don't really know where exactly they're coming from. Luckily, there's a solution, UTMs. UTM or urchin tracking module is a set of parameters that get passed into your analytics software telling us what you've clicked on. Okay, so how do we actually get started with UTMs? Well, we start where everybody else starts on Google. Um, essentially, to build a UTM link, you either need to understand the UTM structure or to make it easier, you can use a UTM builder. So that's what we will do. We'll search for Google analytics or even Google UTM builder. Okay. So the one that you would need is actually the one on the very top. It's ga-dev-tools.appspot.com. And this is provided by Google analytics. So you can see that it's currently loading something here. Uh, the reason it's loading the parameters is because I have another um, page open and it's already pre-filled. So let's just go through what we have here. So, Website URL, what is this? This is basically the link that you would like to share. Uh, it can be a link to your blog, can be a link to your homepage. I do have facebook.com used here for the sake of uh, our demo. The campaign source is going to be the place where you're going to be sharing this link. So it can be LinkedIn, can be Google, can be Facebook, whatever that is. Let's just say I have a page on Facebook that I would like to share and um, I'm going to be sharing it on LinkedIn. The campaign medium is going to be the type of media or the type of sharing um, tool that you're going to be using um, in order to share this link. So it can be an organic post, so post can be an ad, can be a banner, can be a button. So whatever that is, you're going to be adding it here. Campaign name would be the name for uh, your campaign or if you're, you know, if it's a product that you're sharing a link to, you can put the product name in there. It's just a way for you to know the cluster of different posts that you're going to be sharing. So say if you have five posts within with the same within the same, you know, uh, product or the same campaign that you would like to share, that would be the name of the campaign that you would share here. So let's just say I'm sharing my Facebook page on LinkedIn. I know it doesn't make sense. Uh, for engagement purposes. So I want to get some of my LinkedIn uh, contacts to, you know, go and like my page. Again, doesn't make sense, but that's what I'm doing. And the campaign name would be Facebook underscore page underscore engagement. Campaign term is not used for organic sharing. So it is more so for uh, uh, ads. So if you're going to be paying for Google ads, for instance, um, in order for your ad to show up for a specific type of term, you would need to add that term into the, your Google um, campaign or your Google ad. So that would be the campaign term that we're referring to here. So because my campaign is organic, I'm not going to be using this parameter. And as you can see, it's not required. Campaign content is used in order to further narrow down what you're trying to share. So um, let's say that my page is about uh, dogs and I'm going to be sharing uh, a post that is a, you know, a, within a series of different posts, I have five posts and one of them has a picture of a dog. So I want to make sure that I know exactly which post that the user click on in order to get to my website or your or my Facebook page uh, for that matter. Now, it really doesn't make sense um, to use this on Facebook because we can't really track the UTMs of our Facebook page. Facebook has its own integrated uh, analytics function. So we, we don't really have access to the Google Analytics for Facebook, but this is just for the sake of um, showing you how this would work. So let's assume that Facebook was a site that I had analytics uh, information access or analytics access to, and that would have been the way that I would have done it. So this is more so used for your personal sites. Um, and then again, and let's say that for instance, that specific post has a, uh, or that specific post that I'm putting on LinkedIn has a dog picture in it. So, um, next, um, we do have a generated 
uh, campaign URL here, you can see that there are two options. You can either copy the URL or you can convert it to a Bitly a link. Bitly is a system or a service that allows you to shorten your URLs if you don't want to show the full URL in here. Um, it can be useful um, for those who don't want to show their URL structure. It can also discourage some individuals from clicking on your links, so do be careful when you're using this. However, if you do click here, you're able to sign into your Bitly account and get a shortened URL. I don't have a Bitly account, so I'm not going to be using this. I will be copying this URL as it is. You can also set the campaign parameters in the fragment uh, portion of the URL. So you can see it would change the structure of your URL, but this is not recommended simply because some tracking software cannot read that format. So we're just going to be using the regular uh, UTM format. And then I already have a loaded page here, but I'm just going to do it once again, just so that you can see, as you can see, this is what I'm using and I'm going to press enter. And you see that it just loaded the Facebook main page. I am currently in incognito, so I'm not logged into Facebook. So you would be just seeing the sign up page for Facebook. Um, and as you can see, the user cannot really tell the difference whether you know, you're using a parameter structure or not, um, unless they actually go and inspect the URL and see what, what is the link that is being embedded in there. Uh, and as we can probably tell, it's not a lot of us do this and it really makes no difference because it's still loading the right page. The difference is that it's loading some parameters with it that tell the owner of this website, how did the user find them? Okay, so um, what do we do with this now? I'm going to be setting up another UTM that we can use. And I'm going to be showing you how your Google Analytics can track this information and how you can further segment your audience using that information. I'll get this set up and I'll be right back with you. As you can see, I have Google Analytics open here. This is the real-time report. You can access it by going through your homepage, click real-time and clicking on overview. I have this test domain set up here uh, for the purposes of our demo. And as you can see, currently it shows one active user on site and that's because I currently loaded the site on another website uh, or another browser here and um, we can do another one here just in case so you can see uh, the load of users so you can see there's two at the moment um, I'm located in Vancouver so you can see my location here as well and um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to understand the difference between loading the site, uh, you know, uh, in a regular way and loading it with UTMs. So how can we tell um, what kind of information is being passed through, through the UTM? As you can see, there's really not a lot showing in the top keywords or social traffic and such. And that's because we're not doing a social traffic, we're simply uh, using a direct approach here. So what we're going to do when we're looking at real time reports is we're going to click on uh, traffic sources. And in traffic sources, you will be able to see that the medium is actually shown now. And the first one says none, and that's because I'm just accessing the website directly. And the other one is saying uh, that showing a campaign and that's how Google Analytics distinguishes uh, the two because it can tell that I'm using a campaign uh, structure because I am using ETMs to load that site. So uh, I am using the exact same ETM structure we used with Facebook and you can see that the medium is actually stated as post and that's because that's what we've used initially and the source is stated as uh, the LinkedIn. So um, essentially, uh, it, this structure with this analytics tool is telling me that the user clicked on my link and the link had the following um, ETM structure. Now, is it possible for someone to be mistaken and just click on the link and you know, for it not to be in LinkedIn? Sure if you've shared your link somewhere else. Now, if you're only sharing your link on LinkedIn and the only structure that it's using specifically for this campaign is the UTM structure that you've set up, then you should be relatively consistent with your results. Now, how can we see the rest of the information? The rest of the information actually would be 
Um, so the campaign, you can click on the campaign and it would show you the, uh, again, the current campaign. It says the uh, traffic source type campaign. The campaign is here. You can see the source. You can see the active user. There's only one. Um, it also shows you the page views in the last 30 minutes. Now, I have loaded a UTM a couple of days ago on this, uh, I think it was uh, even longer than that uh, before, so that I could show you how you can see the full information and to, to the full of its extent. So we are going to be, in order to see the old information of your campaigns, you're actually going to be going to your acquisition tab and under acquisition, you're going to go to campaigns. And here you're going to click on all campaigns because that's what um, Google Anal Analytics uses it uh, to distinguish these types of uh, campaigns. So you can see that I do have a campaign called Organic UTMs. And within my Google Analytics structure, that's the campaign that I was using previously for that specific uh, link click. So if we click on this Organic UTM, we can access the source slash medium. So source slash medium is LinkedIn and the medium was post. And if we need to see the content of that specific post, if we have used content, we can click on second dimension and go into the um, uh, advertising and then click on add content. Uh, initially, the structure was introduced in order to uh, facilitate ads. So this is why it's located here. And now you can see I have a second column and it says add content. And you can see that the add content says iPad Pro image. And that's what I've used at the time. So with this, you now can fully track your users and you can see where those users have clicked and how many users have clicked on that specific link that had that UTM structure. If you have any further questions, please reach out. Thank you.